just waiting for the go ahead. Are we ready? Okay, we're good. All right. Um, thank you for, uh, sorry for the inconvenience of moving to another room, but I think this is more scenic. Uh, we have a nice, uh, the chambers here, but um, here's the next panel. Uh, Catherine Martinez. Catherine Martinez here? No? Okay. Uh, Suskaya Bai. Tommy O'Donnell. Yes, over there. Sorry. Over th these are not here. Harriet Taub. Harriet, is she here? Harriet? No? Kevin Byrne? Okay. Kevin's gone. Uh, Ann Johnson? Yes. And we'll, we'll, we'll call your name. You have, you've filled out a form? Yes. Okay. Want some more? David Gonzalez? Yeah, I said right down. Oh, wait. Yeah, I take that. Can I sit next to you? Yeah, absolutely. It's a thrill for me to have testified with you. <laughs> Ken Licata? <laughs> Ken Lev? Hi. Mark Grill? Mark Leff? Yeah. Kathy Shannon? Okay. All right, it's good. Okay. And again, thank you for relocating. Um, I guess we can start. Uh, you want to start? Yes. Uh, good morning, Chairman Holden, Chairman Jornai, and distinguished members of the New York City Council Committee on Technology and Committee on Small Business. My name is Tom O'Donnell. I'm president of Theatrical Teams at Local 817. I thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony at this oversight hearing on the growth of the film production industry and its impact on local businesses and the community. In addition to Local 817, I also present this testimony on behalf of the Motion Picture Studios Mechanic Local 52, IATC, International Cinematographers Guild Local 600, IATC, United Scenic Artists Local USA 829, IATC, the Directors Guild of America, the Writers Guild of America East, and the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Teachers and Radio Artists. As a preliminary matter for the, us representing local labor, our industry has unparalleled growth in New York City due to the, in part, the Empire Film Tax Production Credit and the unique locations, talents, and diversity that only exist here in the city. According to an independent study com commissioned by the Film and Television Production Unions analyzing the industry in 2017, the industry supported 38,300 jobs in the city, stimulated 5.6 billion in spending within the five boroughs, and spurred 3.7 billion in New York City wages. 56% of New York City film permits issued in 2017 were for TV series. These episodic television shoots have a typical duration of eight to 10 months per season, providing stable employment for our growing workforce. This data provides proves our collective experience that film production is both an economic driver and a job creator. On the ground, our unions fight to ensure high wages, full benefits, and a robust productions for growing number of workers in this industry. Speaking on behalf of my union, Local 817 has alone seen a 147% increase in membership, as well as a 242% increase in earnings, and a 249% increase in, in benefit contributions to the city and the state since 2004, when the Empire Film Production incentive was first established. The average wage for workers in such below-the-line production-related jobs is approximately $90,000 a year. In order to increase access to these opportunities, regardless of race, gender, or educational attainment, the unions have spent millions of dollars engaging in comprehensive education and outreach and proposed and advocated for legislation to continue diversifying the industry's burgeoning talent pipeline to increase opportunities for minorities and women in both above-the-line and below-the-line jobs. 44% of which do not require a four-year college degree. However, if the city imposes hostile mandates that conflict with the realities of film production, all the progress and growth they have just discussed is placed at risk. The legislation put forth today does not comport with the realities of film production process, and its enactment would risk the loss of this uniquely mobile industry and the jobs and spending that comes with it. Specifically, the impact of Introduction 1700 requires a 14-day permit application for on-street parking would be devastating. By the virtue of the trade, the industry works on extremely tight schedules with frequent changes in script, filming locations, weather, and actors' availability. 
Likewise, a 14-day hold would be costly, wreak havoc with the filming schedule, and would result in lost revenues and opportunities. Uh, can you summarize? Because we, we have a two-minute time. Okay. Right. Um, we, we understand that the 14-day, yes. In summation, I, New York City is currently a world hub for film production. Thousands of high-paying union jobs have been created as a result, in addition to a multitude of ancillary workers, hotel, restaurants, and other suppliers. This proposed uh, introduction 1700 takes a broad approach to mitigate the burdens on location shooting. It is so heavy-handed, in fact, that this legislation would actually eliminate production entirely and the jobs and economic benefits that come with it. Okay, thank you. We have to move on. Can I make two comments on the testimony I've yes. heard here today? Yes. Um, I've heard a lot of frustration with both the oversight and, and MOM, and this industry feels that frustration. Over the last 14 years, the industry's more than doubled, so you would think the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment would more than double, but it's largely remained the same. And to me, they're doing less with more right now. Also, in the last four years, the industry has increased 15 to 20 percent, yet the police detail, which is the first line of defense for the communities, has been diminished by 15 to 20 percent. Um, those remaining on detail have had the overtime dramatically slashed. So I just wanted to highlight. I'm open to any questions that no, you may have. Th that was very important. Thank you so much for that. Next. Okay, uh, my name is Ann Johnson, um, and I'm speaking as an individual, but I'm a member of the New York Production Alliance and a member of that alliance's diversity task force. I'm a member of New York Women in Film and Television. I'm a member of Local 161, IOTC. I am a retired production accountant, so I know the costs because I've written the checks. I know how expensive it is to make changes because I have done um, documents that are required by the insurance industry to pay for if somebody gets sick or if there's a weather day and things have to, have to be changed and it is totally unreasonable for these additional requirements to be put on the film industry. The film industry, as you know, for all, every dollar it gets in tax credits, gives back to the state and city a dollar and 90 cents. So it is very, very important that we keep this industry and keep the Hollywood, uh, mostly, many times production companies, wanting to come here. Um, I would like to just make a couple of comments because I think pretty much everything has been said. But, um, I have to take um, one issue about the small business um, committee that you run. What's killing small businesses in New York is not the film industry. It's the lack of commercial rent control. We, uh, we, I know that we were paying small businesses. I know of churches that had youth committees uh, or youth programs that were paid for by renting out their space to film committees. So I know how much, and I know how a whole street of people were paid so that an actor could run up and down and knock on a door, 15 different uh, houses, and people make money like this. They rent all kinds of things to people. You don't see it, but the people who live in the in the, in the neighborhoods that might be affected by parking might work in the industry and also might have go to businesses that the industry supports. Thank, thank you. Um, I just want to say one other thing, and this is, to me, the most important thing. Uh, as, a as a former community board member, I know that the film and television industry was constantly uh, in touch with the community board. But what troubles me the most is that I don't hear anybody coming in and complaining about um, construction companies that take over lanes of traffic for years at a time, building housing that none of us can afford to live in anyway, and no one complains about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. 
Good afternoon, I'm David Gonzalez with the Association of Independent Commercial Producers, representing nearly 400 small to mid-sized businesses that on average employ 18 to 22 staff that specialize in the production and post-production of commercials for advertisers and agencies. AICP is headquartered here in New York City as are nearly a quarter or over a quarter of our member companies who accounts for 85% of all domestic commercials aired nationally on all media platforms. In 2016, 13% of all domestic shoot days were filmed in New York, investing over $618 million in production expenditures. AICP recognizes the importance of balancing community concerns with the needs of productions. However, we believe that the legislation before you does not strike a balance. We are particularly concerned about the requirement for 14-day uh, applications because in the very complex and unique production process that includes approvals of marketers, advertising agencies, and directors, it is not uncommon to have final approvals for projects within a week of the shoot. Therefore, even three days before the start of filming, we may not have a, lo a location secured. So we urge you to amend the proposal requiring 72 hours notice as it is untenable and unfeasible for commercial productions and is out of step with industry standards. We also urge you to reject the 14-day notification requirement as it will drive commercial productions out of the city. Regarding fees, commercial productions are short-term and project-based. On average, we have one to two shoot days. And yet, we pay a fee for every single project that we shoot. We're strongly opposed to the $800 arbitrary fee increase and the unbalanced structure that heavily taxes shorter-term projects, and we urge you to reject that proposal. We look Thank forward you. to working with you to optimize the benefits of commercial production here in New York City. Thank you. I'd like to note that I've been, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, and I actually have been living in this neighborhood for 31 years. I'm directly impacted by film that uh, occurs, filming that occurs here. Um, I am uh, the executive vice president of Radical Media, which is a media company which produces television commercials, uh, feature films, uh, cable shows, uh, live events, and post-production. We also created the Made in New York logo many years ago. And I truly hope that we will be able to continue to use that on films because the proposals in front of us today are going to make it very difficult for that stamp to be continued to be used. Our main office is on the West Village. Uh, we employ over 100 full-time employees and on top of that, hundreds of freelance people. Uh, we produced last year uh, commercials alone, 112 commercials, uh, in 22 days of that in, in New York City. We are documentary and, and features, again, ma many, many days of shooting here in New York. I again recognize, as David has said, the importance of balancing uh, the needs of the community, but the thought of having to make a request 14 days in advance is, is in, almost impossible. A lot of times I'm awarded a job less than 14, especially in the commercial world, less than 14 days. I then have to hire a location scout, get the locations, then present them to the director. Once the director approves, then go back to the agency client, have them approve it, and then set up the shoot. So it's just not going to work for, for our industry. And it, we will continue to be driven out of New York. There's less and less production. I sincerely hope that my company will continue to be able to have its main headquarters here in New York City and not be forced to, to move out. Thank you for Thank your you. testimony. Uh, Mark, Mark Levine, council member for, on this panel. Question. Just very briefly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and thanks to this uh, very important panel. Uh, what are the cities that New York City competes against as a location site? Is it Toronto, uh, Chicago? <clears throat> the primary cities are, are really Atlanta, Georgia, um, New, Orleans, said New Orleans, Toronto, Vancouver, Los Angeles, to a lesser extent, um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Chicago, Boston. Um, then, then there's worldwide cities we're competing against as well. Without going through every one of those cases, can you give us a sense in a few of our competitor cities on how many days advance notice is required 
for, for a location film? My, I, I don't know of anybody that requires more than 48 hours. I do not know of anybody. I, I may be mistaken, but I do not know of anybody that requires for, more than 48 hours. And if I may add, the California film com uh, State Film Commission in their film ordinance guidelines for best practices uh, says that at least 24 hours. Does anyone know of any other location that we're competing with that has a period longer than 48 hours required? Okay. Just think that that's important context. And some of you heard me speak e earlier about the desire to always lessen the impact on neighborhoods. And there's, I think, much more we can do. But just seems like this 14-day requirement uh, would be uh, absolutely unworkable and therefore um, would play right into the hands of the cities that we're competing with, and no one wants that to happen. Um, so uh, thank you to the panel. Thank you to the chairs for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. I just want to add before you get it. You can certainly see that we have a very complicated city with different needs and different wants. This is not about forcing the industry out. This is about making sure that we come up with a practical solution to some issues that are truly impacting the residents and businesses. So it's not about a heavy-handed approach. And my colleagues, are their intentions are to improve the work environment for the industry to thrive but also preserving and understanding the rights of New Yorkers okay. as residents um, and businesses. So as we strive to put that together, I hope that we keep an open mind. And just to remind everyone, you know, this industry is really important and it brings quite a bit to New York City, but this city is also the city that just takes away Amazon. No one's too big, no one's too important. And if we don't roll this out correctly, it can have a very negative impact. Just keep that in mind. Thank you. Yeah, I'm speaking on behalf of 20,000 members who live and work in New York, and I can assure you they want to be part of this solution because they want to continue to live and work here. And I'd like to stress that the majority of our companies are small businesses located here in New York. Then we have a lot to talk about. There's a lot of mutual ground. Thank you. Thank you, panel. Uh, next panel, uh, Kathy Shore, John Evans, Elliot Myers. Any other, another one? Do you have another one? I think these people left, I think. Didn't they? Okay. Yeah, sure. They told me to do that. Mine's short. Sure. Okay, you, we have only two. Okay, you can start. Hi, I'm, I'm John Evans. Mike, Mike, the button, there's a button on them. All right, okay. I'm John Evans, I'm a resident of the Lower East Side. Um, since last Monday, there have been 10 film shoots in my neighborhood, four of them immediately adjacent to my co-op. One film unit was permitted to shoot the entire week. Two of the shoots were allowed to cone off over 200 parking spaces. I know because I inspected the permits and I counted the spaces. This is contrary to the guidelines stated in the mayor's official web website, which says that, that par parking should be strict, par parking spaces taken away should be strictly limited. That's their words. I don't see how 200 parking spaces is, constitutes that. Obviously, the mayor's office for media and entertainment is not competent to administer the permitting process. I propose that no more than one production be allowed to film in a neighborhood in a month. I think that's reasonable. No more than 25 spaces of parking should be taken away from a neighborhood. That's three sides of a block. I think that's reasonable. Um, um, and finally, that only community boards should be allowed to grant permits. Maybe they do a much better job. If this is not feasible, then film companies should be compelled to pay for off-street parking for residents inconvenienced by the invasion of their neighborhoods. Invasion of their neighborhoods. That's what it feels like. I've, two branches of my family have lived in New York City for eight generations, and I'm being made to feel like a second-class citizen in my own city. And um, one last thing, I've heard so much about, I'm not as sanguine about the economic 
potential because I have not read one reputable economist who says that tax credits are beneficial. In fact, one state actually paid the film industry to get out. So, uh, you know, I, I, that's all I had to say. Thanks. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elliot Myers. I've lived on the Lower East Side since 1980 and certainly seen a lot of changes. Um, I'm talking as a resident and how this affects me. Um, I'm on Suffolk and Delancey Street, uh, uh, between Delancey and Rivington. And as an example, uh, from February of this past year through May, with the exception of holiday weekend in April, we have had one to three shoots on my block every week. When the film companies come in, they take anywhere from three square blocks to nine. Um, often, uh, Clinton Street, which is adjacent, which is a major exit, um, is being uh, closed overnight for uh, shoots, which forces traffic into the neighborhood. Um, I'm, I'm very sorry that uh, Dean McCain is not here. Uh, I have had several communications with Dean. He no longer answers my email saying, how long is this going on? I talk to my neighbors. Basically, no one feels that they have any right to talk to anyone. Everything that you've already covered today is certainly part of what I would want to comment on. Um, but mostly, uh, we also have to, I do want to acknowledge, there seems to be no coordination between the mayor's office and the Department of Buildings. It is a really legitimate argument because everything's on top of each other. My neighborhood is now called Hell Square, and uh, this is part of the reason. Also, in my conversations with the mayor's office and different members there, uh, first of all, I'm not always able to speak to someone who is on any particular shoot under their jurisdiction because they are out in the field. But I am constantly given the impression of, well, people really want to shoot here, and we're, you're not going to be able to stop it, and we're understaffed, and they want me to go out and uh, document the situation on the street because they're unable to do so. And you know what? That's not my job. And I really resent the fact that they are so overwhelmed. If you can't c cover what's going on in the city, you can't allow so much to be going on. It is unfair to the communities. And everything else has already been said today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chairman, just to answer one of the questions about any other city uh, that would have different types of requirements, uh, according to Atlanta's own website, notices of filming are typically distributed five to seven business days ahead of the first day of any production. So there are other uh, cities may, that have film production and that have stricter than 24-hour notice. And, and to, to jump on that point, um, they could actually, I, I understand television needs a shorter turnaround. I understand that. But in movie production, they could possibly do five days, seven days. Uh, so we're at, a, we're at a point here where um, the last, the last entity that's considered is the neighborhood. And nobody thinks about the neighborhood. In fact, what you said about taking up more parking, both of you said that, I've witnessed on almost every shoot in my district, where they take over several blocks they don't need, they take over the day before, but nobody's really commenting why are the production companies allowed to go beyond actually go before the, their permit starts and take over the, the whole neighborhood. Um, if I may make a point, Chairman. Yes. Um, often the first people that the community encounters are the people coming in and putting up the cones and putting up the notifications. They are not, uh, from my experience, good with communicating with the community. And in fact, we are often given a uh, abrupt uh, uh, reprisal. And, and I've witnessed that also. So what we're, we're representing, at least in my district, I have the similar, uh, obviously, to your neighborhoods. You may have more productions, which uh, almost every week it's happening, which um, is an invasion, let's face it. And there should be a moratorium. There should be a limit on a number of shoots in a particular neighborhood. And one neighborhood should not have to bear the brunt, nor should small businesses. So there's got to be a balance. And I haven't heard one person today, and I hope the last panel might address this, um, what is, uh, let, let's say if 
two, d two days is too little and 14 days is too much, what's a compromise? I haven't heard one today. Thank you, panel. Thanks so much for you. This, this is the final panel? Yeah. All right, the last panel we have, uh, Deborah Garcia, Jean Sebastian Brett, Hank Perlman. Didn't we have, didn't we have? I think we saw it. Marnie Majorelle, and anybody else that wishes to testify? Anybody else? Okay. Looks like you're it. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman and the, the Council, the members. Uh, my name is Hank Perlman. I own a co-own a production company here in New York. I've done that since 1997. We also have offices in LA, in uh, around the world, London, Brazil. So we do produce commercials all around the world. So I have a little bit of experience with how it works in other places. We do it in Atlanta, we do it in Chicago. Um, the thing that's different about commercials, and these guys touched on it is, we haven't experienced a surge the last uh, 10, 15 years in my experience here in New York. It's been the opposite. All the commercials have been going other places. They've been going to Los Angeles. And there's a very simple reason. It's gotten more and more expensive to shoot in New York. It's gotten less expensive to shoot in LA. And we have a harder time convincing the advertising agencies who sometimes are based here in New York to shoot here in New York. Uh, the advertising business in general, you know, it used to be Madison Avenue, it used to be here in New York. The advertising business has actually left New York to a certain extent, and the commercial production business has left New York. So I've seen my company shift. Uh, we used to be headquartered here in New York, now we're headquartered in LA. And I, everything I can tell is the 14 day notification will kill us completely. Nobody will be able to, in the commercials at least, I can't speak to movies in film, but in commercials, the 14 day thing would kill us. Um, it's just, as I think somebody else said, the, the jobs aren't awarded a lot of times by the advertising agencies more than seven days in advance. So you ask for a compromise. I think in LA, it's a three day waiting period. I could be wrong, but my experience is you gotta get the permits filled out three days in advance. I think that's what it is in LA, I could be wrong. Um, but 14 days, nobody will shoot in New York. None of our clients will shoot in New York anymore. The other thing I just wanna say really quickly is I live in the West Village, I live on West 12th Street, and there's shoots there all the time. I don't have a, my neighbors and I don't have a problem with it. They're, we actually find the crews pretty good. And uh, I, you know, as far as production companies destroying neighborhoods, like some of, I think a council member said, I don't get that. I, I've never seen that. I know on my shoots, I'm a director as well. So on my shoots, we don't destroy neighborhoods and obviously production companies shouldn't be destroying neighborhoods or communities. Thank you. Thank you very much and, and I, thank you all. Before you step away, I just wanna add, <clears throat> we've seen notices that were handed out to residents. Please stay away from your windows because of explosives that are being used. Imagine being a resident that is being told to stay away from your window. We've seen notices that go up that are copied of parking permits that take much more parking that was permitted to begin with earlier than permitted, it is having a real impact on some neighborhoods, as you've heard from the prior panel. It's about finding a balance. And again, extreme cases, and there are bad actors that we should have perhaps make an example of that shouldn't impact or label the entire industry. We're not looking to demonize the entire industry, but also here in the needs of a community and the residents and businesses is what the city council has, the foundation of the people's house. So thank you. You're welcome, I agree. Thank you again, and um, anybody else would like to testify? Last call? Okay, this meeting is adjourned, thank you.